In this video, we're gonna show you how to make Excel AI powered using Microsoft Copilot. We've got Maven Analytics instructor Enrique Ruiz, and he's gonna show you how to enable Copilot in Excel. He's gonna show you some of the most important functions you should be aware of, compare Copilot to other LLM tools like ChatGPT, and share some of the tips and tricks you should be aware of and some pitfalls to avoid. It's a great video. It's pretty quick. I think you're gonna get a lot out of it. Let us know what you think in the comments. Hope you'll enjoy. So Copilot for Microsoft 365 is an AI powered digital assistant for popular apps like Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and more. In Excel in particular, Copilot combines the power of LLMs with your OneDrive or SharePoint data. And that's a key point. It does require internet usage. It requires you to save your data or your you know, Excel worksheet to either OneDrive or SharePoint. But if you do that, it allows you to create new formula columns. It allows you to highlight, sort, and filter your data. And it even lets you analyze that data using Copilot and show you some insights. And the cool thing about this, and Chris Rule already mentioned this, is that it actually does all of this from within the Excel app itself. So it's it's as part of the Excel workbook as the formula bar is, right? So you don't have to be, you know, constantly flipping around between maybe your Chrome, you know, browser where you have ChatGPT and then going back to Excel and kind of having to express what data you're working with, sort of like I know we mentioned as we saw in some of the demos that Chris was was if anyone was in that Chat GPT session, he, oh, I forgot to add this context. I need to rename the columns here. Here, Copout has access to the data in your cell, so you don't need to add as much context. And it can actually, you know, not just tell you what to do, but actually implement those changes in Excel itself. It is pretty cool. I will say it sounds a lot cooler than it ultimately is, um, but we'll showcase that in the demo. So let's continue here. And I do want to just start by addressing, I think, the elephant in the room, which is, and we had this question earlier. All right, well, what's the difference between Copilot and ChatGPT? So I will say they are similar in many ways. They are both built on top of an LLM, uh, but they do have a few key differences. So I'm going to be comparing the Copilot Pro, what you get with that subscription, with what you get with the ChatGPT Plus subscription. And I actually believe that they, they both uh, cost, if not the same, then very similar uh, monthly subscription costs. So like I mentioned, Copilot is actually embedded within the Excel interface. And what that means is that it can directly interact with the data on the spreadsheets and perform actions, which is pretty neat. Copilot, I mean, ChatGPT, on the other hand, operates as an independent tool. You have to open it you know, on your phone, on a separate web browser. It can, and I know Chris was about to showcase this, import Excel spreadsheets, and then use those advanced analytics that Chris was mentioning to analyze that data. Most of the time it uses Python but it can perform some slightly higher and more advanced, <coughs> sorry, analytics. Now, what I will say, the limitation to Copilot being embedded directly in Excel is that it is limited to Excel's existing data analysis and visualization capabilities. So Copilot can't do anything that you wouldn't have been able to do in Excel yourself, which is a key distinction. ChatGPT on, their hand, on the other hand, has more flexible and efficient data analysis and visualization capabilities because it can use you know, that Python on the back end. Now, one important thing here, and I'll touch, about, uh, touch on this a little bit later as well, or I think in the next slide, Copilot is starting to add Python and Excel functionality into Copilot. So, sorry, a Copilot, Microsoft is starting to implement Python and Excel into Copilot, which means that now it can also use Python to analyze your data. That said, it is still part of Excel's, you know, capabilities and limitations because Python now is a part of Excel. So an important caveat, not something I'll be showcasing because I don't have access to those capabilities of Copilot yet. Um, if you're interested in taking a look at that, I'd suggest checking out Bill Jelen. I think he's Mr. Excel on YouTube. He's got the super beta access in Excel and he has already showcased some cool things uh, using Copilot to help it write Python and Excel code, which is pretty neat. The other thing about Copilot, and you'll notice this during the demos, is that it actually can't modify existing outputs. It can only create new ones from another prompt. So say I have it create a new formula column for me, and I notice that it's not exactly giving me the answer that I wanted. There's an extra step that's involved. It can't, if I ask another prompt and it understands what I need to fix, it can't actually fix the formula that it already created. It can add a second one, and I'd have to delete that first one, but I think that's one minor distinction 
that to me can get a little bit cumbersome if I'm perfectly honest. ChatGPT, on the other hand, if you've ever used it, you'll just know that it maintains just much better contextual awareness. It almost feels like a conversation. I don't think it's that much in Copilot uh, and it lets you iterate and build upon your prompts. So important call out here. I think that Copilot works best as a natural language interface tool in Excel for performing basic actions and light analyses. And what I mean by that is sometimes maybe you know that something is, you know, Excel is capable of doing something, but you don't know exactly, you know, which menu to click, which button to use, which formula to write. So that's where you can just use natural language, prompt Copilot, and it will help you perform that action. But if you do want to get a little bit fancier, perform some more complex analyses, or maybe, you know, do something in multiple steps, Copilot is going to struggle a little bit more with those tasks. So something important to keep in mind here. Now, what are Copilot's basic features? I kind of already talked about them, but let's see. Once you launch Copilot in Excel, you open up that pane and you're going to get options like these. They've been evolving lately, uh, but they basically still do the same exact things, which is A, you can get formula column suggestions or create new formulas from scratch. I think that's pretty neat. Um, Chris mentioned again in the earlier section on AI, LLMs are great at writing, at writing code, right? We saw it with Python and SQL code in the demos that he showcased. Excel formulas really are just another formula or coding language, right? Which means that Copilot actually does a great job, I'd say, of writing formulas for you, even some more complex ones, if you're struggling maybe with writing nested, nested if functions, some, some lookup functions and things like that. Copilot can do that for you. It can also help you highlight key data points by leveraging conditional formatting rules. And I say conditional formatting rules. If you don't know what that is, then I guess that's great for you because Copilot can help you do that. But the interesting thing here is that it doesn't highlight them. It doesn't just change the cell background. So Copilot isn't doing any magic like that. It's really just applying a conditional formatting rule that will then highlight things in the way that you ask for. So again, it's just using Excel's already native functionality. It lets you apply custom sort orders and filters to table columns, which is pretty straightforward. And finally, which is probably the most exciting, it can analyze data and show insights in pivot tables and charts. Again, it's using existing Excel tools, right? Pivot tables and charts to analyze your data. I will say while this is the most exciting aspect of Copilot, it's also the most, I'd say, undercooked. <laughs> so it's not, it's not as capable as creating form at analyzing data as it is at creating formula columns, for example. But we'll get into that with the demos. Again, I know I've said this a lot, but it's important to keep in mind, this is just using existing tools and functionalities from Excel under the hood. So it's just replacing the traditional user interface with natural language queries. And I say this because a lot of the times you might use Copilot and I'll use this in the demo. So I'll use Copilot to do something and then I'll try to show you the, the way that you can do it yourself. And you'll find that most of the time, maybe not most, but some of the time, you're actually better off doing it yourself. It's very easy once you learn how to do some of these found foundational skills in Excel. And a lot of times it's actually a lot faster because as you'll see, Copilot can take its time even for some of the simpler prompts. Now, what are some of its limitations besides it being slow, like I just mentioned? And like I've always said, Copilot's actions or capabilities are limited to predefined tools, can't do anything that isn't already possible in Excel. And there are also some features that you can do in Excel yourself that Copilot doesn't have access to. I think the most important one so far or right now is Power Query, because as I mentioned, it looks like they're going to start rolling out Python and Excel for a Copilot pretty soon, which I will say is quite exciting and might take all of this to the next level. Copilot can also only analyze up to 2 million cells of data. You can still create formula columns and edit a document if it has more than that, but it can take a long time due to the file size. It can even take a long time if you have smaller file sizes. What it can't do if you reach that limitation, though, is summarize it, create new charts, use those and analyze capabilities that we were talking about. It also works best with data stored in Excel tables. At first, it could only work with data that was stored in Excel tables. Now it can still work with data in ranges, and we're going to see that in the demo, but they do need to be stored in a tabular format. So you want to have clear column headers, clear records, no gaps, things like that. So it's going to struggle with unstructured data that you might see stored in some Excel workbooks. Um, 
that is kind of you know not in the ideal structure. So if you can create a pivot table out of it, Copilot can work with it. If you can't, then it won't be able to. Finally, like with all AI, solutions provided may be suboptimal or entirely incorrect. Not only can Copilot hallucinate sometimes, it also lacks judgment. It can't evaluate accuracy. So you are the one that is responsible for verifying its outputs, especially if you're using it in a business setting. So with that said, let's jump onto our demo. Um, I'll quickly just breeze through this. We're gonna be working uh, with HR analytics data set uh, for Acme Corporation. So we're gonna be taking a look at the employee database. And our goal is to use Microsoft Copilot to enhance that data by creating formula-based columns. We we'll want to monitor employees by highlighting, sorting, and filtering and then find insights and make recommendations. So now let me jump over to Excel and let's get started with this demo. Hey there, hope you're enjoying the video. Sorry to interrupt, we'll get you right back to it. Right now, Maven Analytics is offering a deal that was just too big not to share it with you. We've got an early Black Friday sale and you can save up to 50% off of Maven Analytics paid plans. So if you've been considering learning Excel, SQL, Power BI, Python, Tableau, and everything else that you need to become a data analyst or accelerate your career, now is the perfect time. Check it out at mavenanalytics.io. You can see the Black Friday offer in the banner at the top of the screen. You can't miss it. Again, if you're on the fence, there's never been a better time. We don't do a lot of these sales, so I hope that some people will take advantage. Now, enjoy the video. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to go one by one uh, with the basic features, and let's start with creating formulas. So I've got my Excel Copilot demo workbook. You'll see we've got this HR data set here with different columns. We've also got a positions table here that we're going to be using to grab the position and department using this position ID here. So if we go to the home tab, you'll see that we have this co-pilot button over here. Let's open our co-pilot pane. And immediately you'll see that we need to turn on autosave because this needs to be stored. Right now it's just stored in one of my native folders. We need to upload it to OneDrive. So let's go ahead and do that. Click turn on autosave. It's gonna to save to OneDrive. Now we're good to go. Let it think for a second. And now we see some of those options we were talking about. And you'll see that we have some suggested prompts down here. So let's start with this and show a suggestion for a formula column. And let's see what Copilot comes back with. Done this demo multiple times and we've got, I got different iterations of answers. So I'm interested to see what we'll get. Sometimes we get age at date of birth. Sometimes it calculates some sort of a tenure based on the date of hire. Let's see what this is. Yeah, so it looks like we've got the tenure here using years of service. So it's going to calculate the number of years each employee has been in the company by finding the difference between their hire date and today's date. The cool thing about this one is that it's using the date diff function. And if anyone knows about date diff, it's one of those weird Excel formulas that let me actually go ahead and insert this. You'll see that for this employee hired in 2021, so they've been at the company for three years, they are still active. Now, what I mentioned about date diff is that it's actually not, you'll see that it's not captured here by IntelliSense. If I go to formulas, where is this date and time, you won't find it here either. So it's it's a weird hidden formula in Excel for some reason, um, but it's good to know that Copilot knows that it's there and it can help you use it. So I think that's actually a really helpful one. What I will say that Copilot missed though, and it's important, is that there are people that are no longer at the company, right? So for this employee here, looks like date of hire 2016, but they were voluntarily terminated in 2020. So their years of service were really only four, but we're calculating seven here. So let's see if we can iterate on this prompt and ask it to make an update. So can you update the years of service column so that it uses today for active employees and date of termination. We'll put quotes around the column names. So and date of termination for inactive employees. See what we get.
Again, it might take some time uh, with every new prompt. Let's wait. And it looks like this is pretty cool. So if the employee is active, then date diff start date is going to be the date of hire. And then end date is going to be today. Calculate the difference in years. And we can actually show the explanation here. So it's it, it, you can look at the explanation if you want to. If the employee is inactive, then it's going to calculate the difference between date of hire and the date of termination in J2, which I think is pretty neat. So let's insert this. And as you can see, it's creating a years of service to column. So it, again, it didn't edit the one that we had already created. It, it did make the updates that we asked for, but it, it needs to create something new. It can't edit something existing, which I think is something that Copilot should look to improve uh, as they you know make new iterations. So what I'm actually going to do is instead of inserting a new column, it's going to copy this column here, replace it over here. So this is the same because they're still active. But now it looks like this employee over here, years of service is four, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's one. That's a good use of, you know, I think that was a pretty good suggestion. It didn't do everything right, but once we iterated, it did it much better. So now let's try something else. Let's try something like a text function. You'll see that we have performance scores here, but if we wanted to do something like calculate the average performance score, we can't because these are actually test columns. Right, you'll see these are general. We can't sum these together. So maybe we can extract the numeric value from the performance score column. So let's do that. Extract the numeric value from the performance score column. See what we get. I agree, Milton. You should have the option to have it automatically replace if you give it the green light. All right, so it's using left. It's using this unary operator, which is quite unique. I wouldn't have thought to use that myself. And it's going to use find to know exactly how many characters to the left it needs to extract. Seems, and then it's gonna subtract one. So it's a little bit overly complicated. Let's add it here. It does look like it's working properly. Um, what I would have personally done, and let me just delete this. You can just use left. These are all either just three, two, ones, or fours. So you just need to extract one character from the left, close that out. Now you will see that because you only do that, you're extracting, as far as Excel knows, text from text field. You are just getting text back. So this isn't a numeric value. Uh, a numeric value. These are, and you can tell by the, um, by the orientation or by the alignment. All you actually need to do is multiply it by one to kind of force Excel to think about it as a number and we get the same result in what I think is a much simpler formula. But again, Copilot got the job done exactly as we wanted to. It just maybe wasn't entirely efficient. Let's apply that down. And we get the same result. Maybe move this next to our performance score and our years of service, maybe next to our date of termination. All right, so that's an example of a text function. Now let's maybe try a date function and let's make it a little bit more complicated, right? Because as you can see, if you were already aware of the left function, maybe you wouldn't have needed Copilot's help for grabbing the performance score value, right? So say we're looking at date of hire here and we wanted to create a new column that has the year and the quarter that each employee was created. So you might think, oh, to extract the year, I can use a year function, right? But what about to extract the quarter? If we go to formulas, date and time, you'll see that we have day, we have month, we have year, we even have weekday or week num, but we don't have a quarter function. So let's see how Excel, uh, so, sorry, how Copilot would handle this. Let's say create a, let's say year quarter hired column that extracts the year and quarter of the date of hire column for each employee and returns it. Let's specify exactly how we want it to return that value in this format. Sometimes giving it the context of the output helps a lot. So let's say something like, you know, for the first one, it would be, I guess, 2021 Q1, right? Press enter. 
Let's see what we get. All right, it looks like we're using text to extract the year. It's not even using the year function, which is interesting. And then it's concatenating with Q, which is pretty neat. Um, int, so again, if you want to see the explanation, you can see it here. Let's just see if it works, right? Let's add this. It looks like it's working 2021 Q1 in the preview, 2017 Q1, 2019 Q3. Let's go ahead and insert this. And it looks like it worked exactly as we wanted to. So I think that's pretty neat. Um, and especially if you don't know how to calculate quarters using months, uh, which it looks like you just need to subtract one, divide by three, and then add one, which is pretty unique. So let me cut that. I think Copilot did a great job of this one. Insert the cut cells here, and we're good to go. So we have a text function, we have a date function. What about maybe some sort of a nested if function, right? Let's see how well uh, it, it does it work there. Um, Enrique, does it do well with automating features? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Fadwa. Maybe try popping it in the questions tab. Uh, but as far as automation beyond formulas and conditional formatting, there's not a lot that it's doing yet. And you can't, I don't think you can have it write macros. You can probably ask it to generate VBA code for you. Um, I actually know you can ask it to generate VBA code for you. It's part of the Copilot course if, if you want to check it out. Um, but I, I, right now, I maybe wouldn't recommend it for automation, because especially because Microsoft isn't really promoting those sorts of features. Um, so again, let's try calculating a bonus column. And let's take advantage of the performance score that we've already calculated and the salary. So maybe we want to give a 10% bonus, obviously just to active employees that have a performance score of four, which is the highest, 5% bonus of their salary for employees that fully meet or have score of three, and then zero for anyone that's a two, which means it needs improvement, one, which is a performance improvement plan, or anyone that you know has been, isn't active. So let's try to write that prompt. So create a bonus column that gives a 10%, let's see, that gives 10% of their salary to employees with a performance score of four, 5% for those with a score of three and zero otherwise. And we should probably specify two active employees. Let's see what we get. Is Copilot free for a person who uses it rigorously for his or her work? Unfortunately, uh, not. Uh, whether you have it on your personal plan or on a business 365 subscription, uh, you do need to pay for Copilot Pro at this time. Uh, all right, so if it's active and, so if the employee is active and their score is four, then multiply it by 1%. If they're active and their score is three, multiply it by 5%, otherwise zero. Looks like that's gonna work. Insert the column here. So fully meets, they get a 5% bonus that aligns with the salary. Needs improvement, zero. These are inactive, zero. Let's see someone that had exceeds. This is 10% of their salary. So yeah, it looks like it calculated the bonus perfectly. Let me cut that, add it next to their salary. And I think that one's pretty neat. It's using nested if, it's using and, it's using multiple criteria. Uh, so if, if you have, if you struggle with writing if functions, but are very comfortable in expressing the logic of what you want your formula to achieve, I think Copilot is a great tool for that. All right, and finally, let's just do one more. And you'll see that we have this position ID here. We have this positions table over here. So let's look up the department uh, for each employee. So let's say, look up the department for each employee from the positions worksheet based on their position ID. Wait for that to load. And you'll see that we're using XLOOKUP. So that all looks great. Let's try to insert that column. 
And there we go. So if you were wondering if Copilot can do, you know, multi-table analysis, um, it absolutely can, even if you just have it in ranges and not stored in tables. Grace, yes, let's try to use it to create a chart um, as we get, get into that analyze data portion. So let me cut this, maybe add it here next to the position ID. And we have the department for each employee. So I think we can round off the formulas portion um, of this demo again. Pretty decent, pretty decent job. Maybe not every time getting exactly what you wanted, like we saw with the suggestion. Maybe not being very efficient, like we saw with that text function. But it, we were able to get the job done every single time, even with some more complex formulas. One important thing to note here, and I'll recap it later, we are just creating new formula columns. That's what it's inserting. We're not you know, writing um, formulas in just independent cells trying to aggregate things, right? It can't insert those. It can generate the formula for you. You can copy it and paste it though. So let's move on to sorting, filtering, and highlighting data. And you'll see that we have suggest conditional formatting here. Let's see what we get. So you'll see we have a number of options. We can highlight cells in department when salary cells are greater than 63,000. That's interesting. Uh, highlight dates are in the year 1988. Highlight the bottom 10 in the position ID column. That doesn't make any sense. Highlight cells. Okay, so I don't really like any of these. Um, so, but when we see this highlight bottom 10 in column position ID, maybe what we wanna do is actually highlight top 10, maybe in salary, right? So let's just try that ourselves. Highlight, highlight the top 10% of salaries. a great point, David. Yeah, having those critical thinking skills, having an already a knowledge of what Excel is capable of to know if Copilot will be able to handle it for you is key here. So don't think that, you know, anyone that has never used Excel ever can just open something up and become an expert analyst just because they have Copilot. That won't be the case. But if you do have some foundations, then Copilot can help bridge some of those gaps. And I'll actually show an example of that later on. Um, so let's see, Tom 10% uh, in the column salary. That looks good. You'll see that it defaults to fill yellow, color yellow, font color black. If you want to change that, I don't suggest changing it in the prompt. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to apply that. And what you'll see is that it did highlight the cells. You'll see that we're highlighting very high salaries here. So 108,000, 220,000. Um, but it's not just applying, it's not just highlighting it by brute force. It's creating a conditional formatting rule. And what that means is that this is actually dynamic. Say I change this to 1 million. Well, now this is highlighted too because it's now in the top 10%. So it's something, it's a rule that is consistent even if the data changes. So let me undo that. And because it's a rule, we can actually access it. If we go to home, conditional formatting, manage rules, you'll see we have this top 10% rule applied here. So instead, like I mentioned, of having, if you want to maybe not use yellow and maybe use I don't know, purple to highlight these salaries. Um, don't ask ChatGPT, just come, sorry, don't ask Copilot. Come in here, edit the rule, and you can just apply the formatting yourself here. So say we maybe wanted to change the fill to purple, press OK, press OK to just apply that, and we're good to go. So it's a great way of working together with Copilot to achieve something. Now, maybe we want to um, apply sort and filters. I think that's one area where you should know how to sort and filter data yourself in Excel, even if you're just getting started. And Copilot um, is, I mean, it'll, it'll get the job done, but you shouldn't really be leveraging for that because it's going to be slower. But let's just give it a try. Uh, let's say we wanted to maybe filter the active employees that had a bad performance and we want to sort them by salary, right? So filter active employees with a performance score of one or two and sort by the highest salaries. Wait for that to understand the data. It's telling you exactly what it's gonna do. Let's just apply it and you'll see that, yep, we're filtering for active. 
we'll fill we'll filter we are filtering for one and two here and it looks like it actually didn't sort the salary that i can tell applied custom sort at index six. Oh, it is sorted you ju it just didn't add the arrow here which is pretty funny if we sort ourselves maybe now from smallest to largest see so that we get that arrow we make that change very quickly. We don't have to wait for Copilot. So I do think, let's say you wanted to do a different sort of filter. Let me just show you how to do that yourself. You could go here, unfilter, add that back in. You can also use the Control Shift L shortcut that I love for toggling these on. So maybe we want um, you know, people that we hired from Career Builder um, and we want to sort by performance score, right? much easier, much faster, and not complicated at all. But again, just showcasing that it is one of the features if you want to uh, use Copilot for sorting and filtering. Let's go back. I think the most important or the best Copilot feature for editing documents in this way or for highlighting is actually leveraging formula-based conditional formatting rules. So those are rules like these in which we said top 10 for salary. And the way we would actually get that is just conditional formatting. You can use top 10% very easily, but maybe we want to have more than one criteria, right? You can't do that with these native conditional formatting rules. You actually need to use formulas inside of formatting rules to do that. And the good news is that Copilot can actually do that. It didn't have that feature when it first started. It then added it actually before I was going to record my Copilot course. So it is part of that course if you're interested in checking it out. Um, I will say though, lately, I've seen its efficiency in that regard drop a little bit in some rules that I were I was able to create before. I'm not really able to create now, but let's see if we can get it to work. So let's say that we want to highlight the employee that has the highest bonus for each department. So we're adding extra layers of logic here. Let's see if we can do that. Highlight the employee, the highest bonus by department. Yep, I'm unable to create that conditional format rule right now. That one, it was actually able to do during the bonus, which is with during the course recording, which is a shame. Let's try another one. Um, highlight active employees with a performance score of one. So again, two layers of logic. They need to be active and they need to have a performance score of one. Yep. Again, actually unable to incorporate it, which is a shame. Uh, again, if you want to see this working in real time, you can go ahead and check out my course. Um, I have seen it uh, create formula-based conditional formatting rules, but it is something that I think lately it's been struggling with. I'm not sure why, but it's, it's a shame because I do think it's one of the better features for Copilot. So that's sorting, filtering, highlighting. Let's move on to analyzing data, right? And again, you'll see that we have the show data insights button here. So if I click on that, it's going to analyze our data. And let's see what it comes back with. All right, here's what I found. It looks like it's showing the average performance score value. Oh my goodness, <laughs> by performance score. That really is a shame, but it's hilarious that it, that's what it did. So, yep. Whenever someone has <laughs> a performance score of four here, their average performance score here um, is four. Of course it is. For three, it's three. For two, it's two. For one, it's one. Um, we can add that to a new sheet if we want to, uh, just to showcase that Copilot can do that. Um, but it's a shame that it used this example. And it really just goes to highlight the fact that, again, that critical thinking uh, is missing, right? Which is a little bit unfortunate, hopefully something that they can fine tune a little bit. Um, let's go back and let's see if we can see more insights here. Maybe some of these will be a little bit better. Um, it looks like it's showing bonus by data determination and department. Again, not really great. Let's see another one with performance score by recruitment source and employment status. Okay. And if I keep clicking this, you'll see that we have some outliers here. The interesting thing about this one, um, it looks like Microsoft is, I'm assuming using the same calculate, like, engine that it uses in Power BI. I know one of Power BI's features is to identify outliers in line charts specifically. 
And I think it's what it's doing here. Um, doesn't really make sense to plot salary by date of hire, but that's okay. Let's see some more insights. Position ID 24 has a noticeably higher bonus. It's summing bonus. So my guess is that there are simply many employees that are in that position. 24, they're in the production department. So yeah, that probably makes sense. Let's see another one. Um, so three fully accounts for the majority of bonus. That makes sense uh, because only three and four are getting bonuses and we probably have more employees as we can see in that fully meets department. So I think Copilot actually did a pretty lousy job with all of these. You'll notice that it's actually capped to six. So I can't ask it to show me any more insights. What you can do is add all those insights to the grid. This is pretty neat. It's a shame that none of these are very good and it'll create a dashboard of sorts. Um, in a new sheet using, I'm assuming, VBA behind the scenes because you can see the movements uh, in the screen. And there we go. So we have, I think it's still inserting it. We have this nice little result here. Um, and it's cool because it actually shows you um, the pivot tables that it's using as the source data for these charts. Um, another thing I will say that I think detracts some points from Copilot is you need a subscription to get these insights. But this analyze data feature, which leverages AI in the background, is part of, I think, the native 365 subscription. And what I've noticed about that, remember that I mentioned that Copilot is really just using existing Excel tools behind the scenes. So it's not really analyzing these in any new and novel or novel way. It's actually just using the insights from this analyze data tab. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, you'll see that we have this same chart over here. These are slightly different. We didn't see that one before, but you'll notice that a lot of these insights that we get here are those same exact ones. It's just, I guess, hand picking them. I'm not sure what logic it uses. And those are the ones that it's surfacing to you inside the Copilot prompt. Um, I'd say this one's maybe a little bit better. We have a frequency of bonus, which is quite neat. Um, yeah, we have frequency of performance score. That's not bad. Um, Department executive office has a notably, notably higher salary. So this one's not bad. Uh, but again, we didn't have Copilot uh, generate that for us. So, yeah, let's go back to Copilot. And let's see what it can do if we use the critical thinking and ask it to perform, you know, the heavy work and perform the analysis. So maybe we just want to know, you know, how much are we giving out in bonuses? Let's start with an easy task. How much are we paying out in bonuses? All right. So it looks like we have the total down here, uh, seven, seven, 720,330. Granted, we know that we could have just selected the bonus column ourselves. And yeah, we do get that result down here. Maybe you won't be able to see it, but 720,330. Next up, um, let's make, e make it a little bit more complicated. Let's see uh, what's the average performance score by department. Hopefully it'll create a bar chart. Maybe it'll just return a pivot table. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That's actually quite nice. It even kind of gives you this text summary here. Let's add this to a new sheet. You'll see that it used the pivot table in the back end. It's nice because it actually sorts um, in descending order by performance value, which I think is quite neat. It looks like the executive office has the highest performance, then IT production sales admin offices. And it looks like business intelligence <laughs> is quite lacking. So maybe we need to get them a Copilot subscription. Probably we just need to get them a Maven subscription <laughs> and they'll, they'll be able to learn a lot more. Um, let's go back to employees. Um, let's see if we can explicitly ask it for a chart, right? Cause we talked about visualizing. So let's say uh, create a line chart with the number, or let's just say, let's be explicit the count of employees by, um, let's use that year quarter hired that we can create year quarter hired column. I don't, probably don't even need to say column. Uh, 
All right. So it looks like it did summarize that data. It didn't create the line chart for us. It's okay. We can add this to a new sheet. It actually didn't even use the pivot table this time, which is interesting, but it does look like the data is correct. So let's just select that ourselves. I'll be honest, these types of summaries, I have no idea how um, Copilot is, is doing them behind the scenes because there's no formulas here. Um, so this isn't exactly leveraging uh, an Excel tool that I know of, um, but uh, yeah, these, these are interesting, especially since there's such clear cut pivot tables in areas. Let's just go ahead and insert this line chart ourselves. And it looks like we've had a we had a big hiring spree um, here, kind of stopped, and then we had some spikes over here, and we've kind of stopped hiring, uh, I guess, post pandemic over here uh, after 2020, which is pretty interesting. Again, not something that Copa created, but it did help out a little bit. All right, let's try a few more. Uh, let's maybe show the count of active employees and average salary by department. You probably just want a pivot table for that. Let's see what we get. If we don't get a pivot table, I'll show you guys how you can do that yourself in really just a few clicks. Yeah, so unable to process your request. Let's go ahead and insert a pivot table with this data. And we wanted by department, we wanted four active employees. So do we have a status column here somewhere that I'm missing? Employment status, active employees. We wanted the count of employees and their average salary. And there we go. So it looks like executive office, by far the highest average salary, only two employees there. After that, let's look at BI. So 14 employees, average salary of 91K. So again, pivot tables are much easier than most people realize. And you don't necessarily need, those are the kind of foundational skills that it's good to have before just trying to rely on Copilot to do them. Uh, let's try one more, uh, see if it gets it. This one is going to be even uh, an even harder question, but I think something that someone should would reasonably be asking AI if they were looking at this data set. Let's say I'm a hiring manager at this company, uh, and I'm looking at tur turnover rates, and I want to know, you know, what maybe what recruitment source has the least percentage of employees that are leaving the company voluntarily. So let's ask, what is the recruitment source with the least percentage, or I guess lowest percentage of employees being voluntarily terminated? See what we get. And again, unable to process our request. Um, so again, for these more complex analyses, it does struggle. Again, I can show you how we could do that. It's a little bit, still using a pivot table, a little bit harder than the last one, but still something that if you know exactly where to click, what to drag, you can get there, right? Um, so we want uh, recruitment source. That's what we want to bro break things down by. Uh, let's drag the employment status into column, employee name into values. So here we can see how many people from Career Builder uh, are still active, were terminated for cause, and were voluntarily terminated? And if we want to see what percentage this represents of the total, we can show values as percent of row total. And if we maybe add a little bit of conditional formatting here, let's say red is bad because we don't want that turnover. It looks like whenever we hire someone by employee referral, um, they are a lot less likely. Uh, to eventually leave the company themselves, which I think is quite interesting, something that hopefully in the future Copilot will be able to point out for us. But again, something that you can, you know, pretty easily get to yourself if you know exactly, you know, how to use Excel and pivot tables um, critically. So yeah, that I, I have a few more slides that I can share, but they're recapping a lot of the points that we've already made. So John, I don't know if it's best to maybe jump into QA. Um, yeah, let's let's do a little bit of Q and A, and, and we don't have a session right after, so we're not urgent to to drop off. So I think this one could be a little bit longer than um, the others, but we've we've kind of really dropped at this point. Um, yeah, so let's let's get in there. Um, assuming the data analyst doesn't know much about this data set, is what they're getting at. Um, yeah. 
could Copilot suggest how to best analyze it and, and which business questions or hypotheses need to be tested? Or is that something that still has to come from the analysts? That's a great question, actually. Um, in fact, I, I haven't even exp I haven't tried to explore that yourself. I know that you can yeah. ask Copilot things and leverage it as a normal LLM. So you can, I'll, I'll do this off screen here, but I'll say, um, help me describe this data set. And I'll continue answering um, as that kind of calculates. Uh, but awesome. I will say, and it's a shame that this is a Copilot course, but I think that's a great one to leverage ChatGPT for, where you can you yeah. know, drop those files in there and just say like, hey, tell me a little bit about this data set. Like I'm in this yeah. role. What kind of questions should I be asking? I think ChatGPT is great for that. Let me see. Let me read. Yeah. So it it, it really just kind of returned one of those analysis prompts um, in Copilot. So I don't think it it's, it's great for that right now. Um, it's kind of just yeah. listing the columns. Um, but I do think ChatGPT is an excellent tool for for those. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I think of it like that. So I consider that sort of like almost like a brainstorming exercise, yeah. right? Like where you're just coming up with a list of questions and. Um, as the nice thing about any time it's a brainstorming exercise, whether it's that or something else, you're still there to evaluate are the ideas that it came up with good ones, you know? So yeah. like, it's probably gonna give you a bunch of good ideas and it might give you some that are, you know, fine or like maybe you shouldn't prioritize as highly. So you, I think you still need that critical thinking, but, um, but yeah, as a brainstorming idea generation tool, these things are amazing, you know, but then you've, you've got to bring the critical thinking lens to it. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you this, I use ChatGPT for challenge prompts all the time, right? Maybe I find, you know, interesting data sets and I'll, I'll say like, hey, like we're building this challenge. This is the data that we're using. Like I have some ideas of where I want to go with it, but can you like, and, and then I'll use it as a brainstorming tool. And it's, it's, it's great. Yeah, yeah. But you're there at the end of the day to backstop it, to make sure yeah. that it's actually, what we put out is actually good, which yeah. is, I'm, I'm very grateful for. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. So uh, is... All right, this is probably an easy one. Um, is Copilot available for all Microsoft tools like Power BI or, or other things, or is it just Excel right now? It's it's available for all. Oh, I, maybe I won't say all, but I do know it's available for Power BI. What I will say is that the, the, the Copilot Pro subscription that enables Power BI, uh, Copilot in Excel, in Word and PowerPoint um, is actually different from Power BI. So I, I, Aaron knows more about this than I do, but I, I think you need like, it's just a special subscription in your tenant settings or something like that for Copilot uh, in Power BI. And I think it's a lot more price prohibitive to the point where yeah. I don't think we've even gotten around to experimenting with it because it's just so expensive for Power BI. Yeah. Um, not yeah. so much for, for Excel. And there's actually a free trial too. Um, this is a good one in here. This was Milton. Uh, Milton asks, is there an example that readily comes to mind of a Copilot response to a prompt of yours that changed your default approach to handling the task like oh, can you that. think of anything like that um i will say the we, we kind of saw an example earlier where it, we use that unary operator to force text into numbers uh, I, I don't think it's going to change how i approach that in the in the future but i do think that was a good way of doing that in general yeah. though i haven't seen that yet i will say there are some more like we just saw that quarter calculation, right? I think if I were to have done that myself, I would have had to Google or, you know, or, you know, ask yeah. GPT or something like that to like, hey, how do I turn months into quarters? And it probably would have given me that same formula. So I, I think um, those are good scenarios. But in, in, in the sense of how I would tackle it if I weren't using AI, I think it does most things in the same way I would or in ways that I think even you know, are even worse. But it's an excellent yeah. question, and maybe one day it will. Maybe even with, with Python and Excel, it might once it integrates it. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Um, how about privacy considerations when you're if you're using any sensitive data? Should you not use Copilot? Like you, you already said, you do have to be able to connect to the internet. So, what do you think about sensitive data? You have to connect to the internet. You have to save it in OneDrive or SharePoint, and it, it's doing all of its calculations in the cloud. So it's not, it, it's running it through their servers. Uh, so yeah, they they are when when it says understanding analyzing your data, it's not doing so on your device. Uh, so yeah. I, I don't know exactly what the fine print there is. I'm, I'm sure Microsoft will say, and maybe they're completely right that like there are no security concerns. But just know that it is going through Microsoft, like through their. <laughs> through their eyes or yeah. servers or, you know, 
engines. Yeah, I, I would be super careful with like specific personally identifiable information on your customers. Like don't yeah. put definitely not like financial information in there. No like social security numbers or any other identifiers that you wouldn't want to get out. Probably even email addresses, phone numbers, that type of stuff. Um, just because obviously like Microsoft, super robust, you know, best in the world, um, enterprise security, but you know, stuff happens and just, I would err on the side of caution with, with your most sensitive stuff. Yeah. And I, I will say, I actually, cause the same thing is true for Python and Excel. Like every, you, it, you don't have to save it's, it's interesting. You don't have to save those to OneDrive, but the Python and Excel engine, again, everything goes through them. You need an internet connection. And I think those same security questions arise. I actually have a call with the Microsoft team tomorrow morning because they want I don't know. They wanted my opinion on Python and Excel so far. So I'll make sure to ask that about privacy. Yeah. What exactly they say. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, this one's interesting. So, so for folks who don't know, Enrique is an instructor. He also <laughs> works on, um, he, he works on our course curriculum. He and Chris are, are basically the owners of it. Um, what any, if any plans for like a PowerPoint course, maybe PowerPoint with, um, with Copilot, what, are we thinking about like a presentations course anytime soon? Great question. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, I am working on a presenting with data course that will involve, you know, making, think of it. I know many people in the chat mentioned the advanced dashboard design course. I know some of our, you know, storytelling with data sessions are some of those most popular ones. Those so far have been focused on, all right, I want to create this dashboard or I want to create this visual. How do I use it to communicate the most effectively? A lot of the times you actually yourself use those as mediums to communicate Verbally, right? And you put those in presentations. So we are kind of thinking about that course as the next step. It's a great point. Uh, maybe I'll have like a, you know, pro tip lesson or some sort of lesson in there that uh, incorporates Copilot just to see if it's if it's any use or if it's any help. Maybe maybe it is. Yeah, awesome. Um, let's yeah, let's try to get one or two more. So there's a lot of good questions in here. Uh, Ooh, this is interesting. Can you predict the future a little bit? This is from Mohammed. Um, what AI powered Excel features do you think might be rolling out in the future? Or maybe like which ones would you wish they would have? Good question. Um, I wish it, like the one that I'm most waiting for is its ability to edit things that are already on there. So not just layer on top, but like, oh, you created this chart. Like what, what I was most excited for personally is like, all right, there's a stock Excel bar chart, like apply these formatting things to it, right? Like I want it to look like this. Um, yeah. So I think object editing is something that could be very useful in the future. Expected? I don't, I don't honestly, I don't know how expected that is. I do know that Python and Excel integration is yeah. coming soon, uh, but that's, that's one that I wish for personally. Yeah. And think like, um, like think about if you could give it like your recipe, like whenever I make a bar chart, I always want this, right? Yeah. Like, I want these colors. I want the access at zero, or or maybe you don't. I want the grid lines off of it. I want to title it this font, and you could just like teach yeah. it your recipe, and then it just that would save a bunch of steps. Everyone. That's like certainly not the highest value you're adding as an analyst is formatting that chart the same way every time, right? So yeah, I think I love that one. one. That could be interesting. Is um, I know now Excel is like you 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 have the ability to create your own functions with Lambda. Uh, but and the process basically is write it yourself so it works, then wrap it in a yep. lambda so that you you know and and then you know have to go to the name manager, create a new name, paste that lambda in there. So if it could automate that process, like hey, I I already wrote this very complex function. I know I use it all the time. I always forget exactly how I need to do that whole lambda process to name that function and have it be shareable. So if Copilot could do that, that would be pretty neat too. Yeah, very cool. Awesome. All right. Well, um, Enrique predicting the future or at least giving us a wish list is probably a, uh, a great place to end. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was part of our open campus event where we ran 24 sessions in front of a live audience over the course of two weeks. It was a ton of fun. We did all these live sessions and we opened up our entire learning platform for free. You did not need a paid account to take advantage of all the courses so folks could learn Excel, SQL, Power BI, Tableau, Python, etc. All the stuff that you need to learn data analysis skills and take your career to the next level. If you missed it this year, keep an eye out. We'll definitely be doing this again next year, probably again in October. We would love to see you there. And the last thing that I'll leave you with 
if you're looking to take your skills to the next level right now and you've been on the fence about a Maven Analytics paid plan, we are currently running our early Black Friday sale. This is the absolute best time to pay for Maven Analytics if you want to, so don't miss out. You'll have the opportunity to save up to 50% on paid plans, which is a pretty great opportunity. You can check out all the details at mavenanalytics.io. Just look for the early Black Friday banner at the top of the site. You can't miss it. Hope that we'll see some of you there as well. Thanks for watching.